This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This is the Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer. This is the tale of Sir Topaz. The Prologue. When said was this miracle every man, a sober was that wonder was to see. Till that our host to Japan he began, And then at erst he looked upon me, And say it thus, What man art thou? Thou lookest as thou wouldst find an hare, For ever on the ground I see thee stare. Approach near, and look up merrily, Now where you, sirs, and let this man have place, He in the waist is shapen as well as I. This were a puppet in an armed embrace, for any woman small and fair of face, He seemeth elvish by his countenance, For unto no white doth he dalliance. Say now somewhat, since other folk have said, Tell us a tale of mirth, and that anon. Host, quoth I, be not evil apaid, For other tale certes can I none. Out of a rhyme I learned your agone. Yea, that is good, quoth he, now shall we hear, some dainty thing, methinketh, by thy cheer. The Tale, the First Fit Listen, lordings, in good intent, And I will tell you veriment of mirth and of salas. Oliver Knight was fair and gent, In battle and in tournament. His name was Sir Topas. He born he was in far country, In Flanders all beyond the sea, At popering in the place. His father was a man full free, and lord he was of that country, as it was God's grace. Sir Topaz was a doughty swain, white was his face as pandemain, his lips red as rose. His road is like scarlet in grain, and I tell you in good certain, he had a seemly nose. His hair, his beard, was like saffron, that to his girdle reached a dune, his shoes of cordawain. Of Bruges were his hosen brown, his robe was of Sillertown, that cost a many a Jane. He could hunt at the wild deer, and ride on hawking for revere, with grey goss hawk on hand. There too he was a good archer, of wrestling was there none his peer, where any ram should stand. Full many a maiden, bright in bower, they mourned for him paramour, when there were better sleep. But he was chaste and no lecture, and sweet as is the bramble flower that beareth the red heap. And so it fell upon a day, for sooth as I tell may, Sir Topaz would outride. He worth upon his steed grey, and in his hand a lance gay, a long sword by his side. He pricked through a fair forest, wherein is many a wild beast, yea, both buck and hare. And as he pricked north and east, I tell it you, him had all meest, betide a sorry care. There sprang herbs, great and small, the licorice and the setter wall, and many a clove gilofra. A nutmeg to put in ale, whether it be moist or stale, or for to lay in coffer. The bird sang, it is no jay, that spare her can the popping jay, that joy it was to hear. The throstle cock made eke his lay, The wood dove upon the spray, She sang full loud and clear. Sir Topaz fell in love longing, All when he heard the throstle sing, And prickered as he were wood. His fair steed in his pricking, So sweated that men might him wring, His sides were all blood. Sir Topaz ache so where he was, For pricking on the softer grass, So fierce was his courage, That down he laid him in that place, To make his steed some solace, And give him good forage. Ah, St. Mary, Benedicti, What aileth thilk love at me? To bind me so sore, Me dreamed all this night, pardie, An elf-queen shall my layman be, And sleep under my gore. An elf-queen will I love, he wis, for in this world no woman is worthy to be my make in town. All other women I forsake, and to an elf-queen I me take, by dale and eke by down. 
Into his saddle he clomb anon, And pricked over stile and stone, An elf-queen for me to spy. Till he so long had ridden and gone, That he found in a privy one, That country of Ferai. So wild! For in that country was there none, That to him durst ride or gone, Neither wife nor child. Till that there came a great giant, Whose name was the Oliphant, A perilous man of deed. He said, Child, by Termagant, But if thou prickest out mine haunt, Anon I slay thy steed with mace. Here is the queen a fairy, With harp and pipe and symphony, Dwelling in this place. The child said, Or so may I, The to-morrow will I meet a thee, when I have mine armour. And yet I hope, pa me fay, that thou shalt with this lance again, abeyan it full sore, thy maw, shall I pierce if I may, ere it be fully prime of day, for here thou shalt be slaw. Sir Topaz drew back full fast, the giant at him stones cast, out of a fell staff sling, but fair escaped child to pass, and all it was through God's grace, and through his fair bearing. Yet listen, lordings, to my tale, merrier than the nightingale, for now I will you round. How sir to pass with cider smell, pricking over hill and dale, is come again to town. His merry men commanded he to make him both game and glee, for needest must he fight. With the giant with headers three, for paramour and jollity, of one that shone full bright. Do come, he said, my minstralus, and guitar for to tell a talus, anon in mine arming, of romances that be royals, of popes and of cardinals, and eke of love longing. They fetched him first the sweet wine, and mead eke in a masseline, and royal spicery, of gingerbread that was full fine, and licorice and eke cumine, with sugar that is tree. He did her next his white layer, of cloth and of lake fine and clear, a breech and eke a shirt, and next his shirt and hackton, and over that an habergeon, for piercing of his heart. And over that a fine hauberk was all he wrought of Jew's work, full strong it was of plate. And over that his coat armour, as white as is the lily flower, in which he would debate. His shield was all of gold so red, and therein was a boar's head, a carbuncle beside. And there he swore on ale and bread, how that giant should be dead. Be tied, what so be tied. His jambo were of curbally, his sword a sheath of ivory, his helm of latoon bright, his saddle was of rural bone, his bridle as the sun shone, or as the moonlight. His spear was a fine cypress that bodeth war and nothing peace, the head full sharp he ground. His steed was all a dapple grey, it went an amble in the way, full softly and round in land. Lo, Lord, as mine, here is a fit, if ye will any more of it, to tell it I will fand the second fit. Now hold your mouth for charity, both knight and lady free, and hearken to my spell, of battle and of chivalry, of ladies' love and druery, anon I will you tell. Men speak of romances of price, of horn child and of appetice, of bevis and sagai, of surly bow and plain demour, but Sir Topaz he bears the flower of royal chivalry. His good steed he all bestrode, and forth upon his way he glowed, a sparkle out of brand. Upon his crest he bare a tower, and therein stick a lily flower, got shield his course from shand. And for he was a knight and trouse, he would sleepen in none house, but liggen in his hood. His brighter helm was his wanger, and by him baited his destra, of herbs fine and good. Himself drank water of the well, as did the knight Sir Percivale, 
so worthy under weed, till on a day. End of the tale of Sir Topaz.